Ultimately, though, you need energy storage. We all know who this is. Tony Stark. Oh, did I give away a secret identity? Sorry, sorry, Elon. Uh, so he's announcing the Tesla Powerwall battery. And the funny thing is Panasonic makes that battery and it's just got a Tesla casing on the outside. But it's not some technical breakthrough that got them there. It's a long-term exponential trend, a tripling the amount of power you can store per gram and a 10x reduction in the cost of batteries over the course of the last 20 years, and that keeps on going. In Germany now, it looks like with a small battery, about half the size of the power wall and a small solar panel, a German household can provide about 70% of its own energy in summer months. So if you're a utility and your business model is charging by volume, what happens to you in this world? Well, the business model is going to have to change, and now we see utilities wanting to own that solar panel so they can get it on both sides, and the ones that flourish will do that. But Tesla got a billion dollars in pre-orders the first week they announced the battery. Most of them did not go to homes. 90% were for this size battery, which went to businesses, commercial spaces, factories, and utilities. And now every manufacturer in the world that does solar is moving into the same thing. This is the Trina solar uh, battery, the largest solar company in the world. It's about a one megawatt hour battery. I've been inside of it. And they go after some very, very simple scenarios. Even if you don't care about solar, it's probably the case that you pay one price for energy at night, that's very, very cheap, and another price during the day. In California, that delta is about 20 cents per kilowatt hour, is the retail cost difference. Well, guess what? A battery is cheaper than that now. So you can fill it up at night with cheap power and then discharge it during the day instead of using that expensive power. And every battery startup I know, and I'm invested in a few of them, has this as their starter business model to get into the field and bootstrap themselves up. Battery prices are not done coming down. This is a whole bunch of different forecasts of where battery prices would go. And these analysts, including the EIA, that's the most conservative, saw you know, huge drops, 3x drop over five years, over 10 years when they made these forecasts. Well, Tesla today is right about there, actually. Uh, this is where Tesla said they would be three years ago, and they're there. They just announced on their investor call they're below $190 per kilowatt hour. So I believe in Elon Musk more than I believe in the Energy Information Agency as far as projections of the future. Batteries also follow this exponential learning curve. As they get higher scale, they drop in price, and they do so at basically the exact same pace as solar. So think of batteries as where solar was 15 years ago. Still high priced, but about to start their exponential plunge. And there's many, many more battery technologies we could talk about. So this leads to a crazy idea, and the idea being that energy going clean might actually be cheaper than dirty energy. Right? We've always assumed that going clean meant higher prices, but now we're starting to see even very conservative organizations say that it might actually be cheaper. This is the International Energy Agency, the IEA. This is not an exponential organization. Right? Let me show you that. Here's their solar forecasts over the last uh, decade or so, since 2002. So in 2002, that very bottom line, that was their solar forecast. 2004, they said, oops, it went a little bit faster. We lifted it. 2006, they, they lifted again, you know, ad nauseum. And the actual forecast, the actual growth has been the dark blue line. Now, who thinks they've got it right with that last line? This is the IEA. This is the world's experts. Have some faith, people. Who thinks they've got it right? And you're all smarter than that. You can tell who's the butt of my joke. Because this is how it maps, and the blue line is already lifted uh, substantially off of their last forecast from 2014. But the IEA says solar will be the dominant form of electricity by mid-century, and the cost will be unbeatable. Or UBS, you all know UBS. They said something that I thought I would only ever hear myself say. Renewables are now deflationary to energy prices. Right. We've coupled the cost of energy to the ever-declining cost of technology. And this is what we see in Europe, the ISC projecting this, or one of my favorite of these graphs, Alliance Bernstein, a private equity firm. They drew this graph. Across the bottom, you see the cost of coal, natural gas, oil. And on the top right there, I think somebody's kid scrawled with a crayon. Right? Is that what happened? No. This is the long-term view. That is a disruptive technology. Right. 
it's like your Kodak and you think these digital cameras will never catch up. I've got the ultimate business model. I sell you the razor, I sell you the blades, and then suddenly I'm bankrupt and out of business. So the world is now deploying more clean energy per year than dirty energy, and we will never look back. I'm over, but I want to talk just briefly about what happens to oil. This is one of my favorite quotes. This is the former Saudi oil minister. The Stone Age didn't end for a lack of stone, and the oil age will end long before we run out of oil. He's warning his fellow princes that the world is going to produce a technology replacement for oil. And we are. Oil fluctuates. It's about a 2%, 2 million barrels per day. Difference in supply and demand has caused this huge oil fluctuation. Nobody predicted it. Okay? But we are headed there. And EVs, I didn't believe in them three years ago, are going to get us there. Only one in 1,000 vehicles on the road is an electric vehicle. Just one million vehicles out of one billion. It's a trivial number. Couldn't possibly be disruptive. They've got a 60% growth rate, though. Right? You all know this. Tesla announced this car. Model 3, 35K, 200-mile range. How many orders for this did they get in the first day? 300,000 was the final number in the first day. The EIA forecasted that we'd be selling 1,000 vehicles a year with a 200-mile range by 2040. All right, this is like, you just can't trust the experts in this. Trust the technology and the innovators, not the experts. And as the battery prices come down, we'll sell more EVs, which will bring down the cost of batteries, which will make EVs cheaper, and we'll sell more EVs. And it's a perfect virtuous cycle. And there's every reason to believe that EVs will ultimately be cheaper than internal combustion cars, because they're far simpler. They have 90% fewer moving parts. This is the drivetrain and engine of an electric vehicle. And so if you take the learning curve, the rate at which they're improving, and you play out the cost of electric vehicles, you get that they will be not just cheaper than comparable vehicles, but by the end of, by 2030, they'll be cheaper than the cheapest car sold in the US, a two-seater smart car. That's a disruption. And at that point, you'll, they will be taking more oil demand off the market than caused the recent plunge in prices. So I don't know what the short-term price of oil is, but the long-term price of oil is very, very cheap as our demand drops. I am going to stop right there. I've given you a whole lot. Uh, so thank you very much. You can tweet at me or come find me afterwards.